Are you fed up with sinkholes and air bubbles in all of your candles like these? Well, today is your lucky day because I've got four tips to fix that easily and we're going to go through them right now. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of While the Wax Melts, sponsored by Simply Scented. Today we're looking at sinkholes and air bubbles and how to fix them in your candles. Now first of all, we need to know why does this happen in the first place and can it be avoided? When you make a candle, you start off by pouring wax into a jug and then we add fragrance oil and then we stir it and we might add um, other bits and pieces like dyes and stuff like that and all of these times when we're stirring it and we're mixing it and we're pouring it into different jugs, we're creating micro bubbles. And you might not be able to see them from the naked eye, but they are there. And when we go to pour this liquid mixture into our candle vessels, what happens is, is that the tops and the sides will cool first, meaning that all of the air will get pushed in towards the middle. And what's in the middle? You've got your wick, and your wick is usually the most textured part of your vessel, yeah? The sides of your vessel are going to be smooth because they're either glass or ceramic or something else, but the wick is made out of cotton, and that means that any air bubbles can cling onto that while the rest of it sets all the way around it. Meaning that all the air gets pushed to the middle and clings onto this wick, and while everything else sets, it's stuck there, which is why when you get air pockets and bubbles, they're usually in the middle around the wick. So how can we stop this? Well, number one, as a bonus tip, a great way to stop it is to be really careful when you're pouring stuff into pictures in the first place. So don't pour from up high and create lots of extra bubbles when you don't need to. I like to pour onto a um, silicon spatula to try and alleviate any bubbles getting made in there. And when I stir, I stir gently. Yeah, we don't want to be thrashing around um, creating extra bubbles where we don't need to because those bubbles will be in the mixture when you pour it. Also, if you can, when you've poured the fragrance oil in and you've got your dyes and whatever else you want in there, let it rest, yeah? Just leave it alone for a couple of minutes. Try and let any bubbles that are gonna come out, come out. Now for the rest of this, this is kind of a practical session, so we're gonna move to the workshop now and um, I'll walk you through the different ways that we can alleviate this problem. So let's go. to alleviate the problem of your candle pushing all the air into the middle is to have your candle set as slowly as possible. And to do this, we wanna heat the jars. Now, if you're working from home, you can heat your jars in an oven. And that's easy enough. You just set it onto say 50 or 60 degrees, pop them in there for 10 minutes, and then take them out and you're ready to go. Make sure that when you take them out, you use um, some heat proof gloves because you don't wanna burn yourself. But if you're not at home or you're in a spare room or something like that, you probably don't have access to your oven, so I suggest getting one of these. And this is a hostess trolley or um, a heated food trolley. Um, you can get them for like a hundred pounds on Gumtree or eBay and stuff like that because people are always getting rid of them, but they are literally a lifesaver. We can put 300 candles or so in these and we just leave them warming up while we're getting everything else ready. And then we take it all out and uh, we've got heated jars. And what that means is, is that your candle isn't setting so quickly from the outside because this is heated to a similar temperature to the waxes on the inside, which, which means you're gonna get a more uniform time for setting and it's gonna all set at the same rate and that's gonna push the air bubbles up instead of in. And that's what we want. And we can do this before we employ any of the other methods that I'm about to show you. So if we take the two methods that I've already said, number one, pouring gently, and number two, heating your glasses to begin with, that's gonna really help. One last little bonus is uh, make sure that your wicks are straight. If they've got a curve in them, then they're more likely to have air trapped up against them. So we want to, if we've got a wick that's got a bit of a curve, we just want to straighten that out and put it in place with a peg or some other device that you're using to hold your wicks. Right, so we're doing three methods here. The first method uh, that I like to use is double pour. Double pours are really easy to do and they're really useful if you're pouring lots of candles, less useful if you're only pouring one or two. Um, so all you do is you're gonna pour your candle up to halfway and you're gonna let that set. And then you're just gonna pop it to one side. Once that's set, we're gonna come back to it and fill it all the way up. 
and that just means that there is less room for the air to cling to the wick or anything else and it's easier for it to disperse upwards. So we're just creating two layers. You can do it in three layers if you want, if it's a bigger candle, but the point is, is that the smaller the layers in depth, the less chance there is of air getting caught inside it. The second method, we're just going to pour the full candle and secure the wick in place as normal and then we're going to come back and fix it afterwards. The third method, we're not going to secure the wick, we're going to use the wick later to create extra air pockets that we can fix and then draw the air out. So for this one, we're just going to let the wick just hang to the side and um, we'll come back to it when the wax is in a state where it's almost set but isn't completely solid. So you can see the first method that's half poured is now set. Obviously it's going to set faster than the others because there's less wax in it. So now we're just going to go back to that and top it up and you can see that the part that was already there has set really smoothly because there's no room for air to congregate underneath. So we're just going to do the same again with the next layer and that should be pretty much done. If there is an air bubble we know it's only going to be a really small one and probably really easy to fix afterwards with a heat gun because it's not going to be any deeper than halfway down the candle. Okay, here we are with the second one. So we've poured this completely and even if it does look smooth, we know that there is probably air bubbles underneath. So what we're going to do is going to take either a thermometer or a skewer or anything sharp really and then we're going to create some holes in it around the wick near the centre and as I push it in you'll probably notice that it's, at some point it's just hitting air and it's just going in really quickly and that is because there is air bubbles underneath the surface and that's going to affect your burn. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open those up, create some channels for the air to come out and then we're going to use a heat gun to reheat the top and allow the wax to refill in those holes, pushing the air back out and then we should have a completely smooth and solid candle. So here we are with the relaxed technique and as the candle now you can see is soft to touch, it's not fully hard, we're just going to pull the wick back into the centre and by doing this we've created a channel that, we're, that is going to allow all of the air to come back out and then all we need to do is get a heat gun again and we're just going to heat gun the top of this and allow all the wax to refill in that channel pushing the air back out and then creating a solid candle with a smooth top. Okay so in summary you've actually had about five techniques here that's going to help you fit your candles and make them look as smooth as possible. When would I use which one? If I'm only making one or two candles I would always use either the skewer technique or the relaxed wick technique. They both basically do the same thing, it just depends on what you prefer. Um, the great thing about it is that you won't have to come back and heat up more wax and create more fragrance oil for this because you're only pouring one. If you're pouring lots of candles, that may become a bit of a pain because it takes more time to skewer them all or move the wicks and reheat and everything. So when I'm pouring more than say 30 candles at a time, I will always move to the second pour technique because both times I'm gonna to have to make quite a lot of wax anyway. In fact, I'm probably gonna to have to do two loads whether I poured it all in once or if I poured it in two parts. And as you can see, now we've got three perfectly burning, completely smooth, solid candles that we know are gonna burn correctly all the way down to the bottom. Thank you again for watching another one of our videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Let me know what you wanna hear below and I can't wait to see you in the next one.